Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's episode, we're talking about HD0 cameras. We're gonna be looking at five different cameras in different modes to figure out which has the best image quality and which has the best performance depending on your needs. We're also gonna be swapping some lenses between the Micro V3 and the Micro V2 cameras to see how they compare with similar lenses. And we're gonna talk about a surprising result that I had in one of the camera modes that might actually be my new favorite mode to fly in. But before we jump into that, let's just look at a couple of quick highlights. Here we go. Okay, so here we're comparing the four main cameras currently available for HD0. From a high level, we see significant differences in the field of view for each camera, which comes down to the different types of lenses, because it's worth noting that actually all of these cameras have the same 16 by nine sensor, except for the Nano 90, which has a four by three sensor, which is capable of 90 frames per second and 540p resolution. Okay, so right here, we're looking at the Micro V3 and the V2, the Nano V3 and the Nano 90. Now the first thing we're gonna cover real quick is that the Nano V3 is actually the replacement for the Nano Lite. It has a much better lens, but it is 0.7 grams heavier. So let's take a look to see if it's really worth the extra weight. The one thing that's very obvious is the Nano Lite has this hazing issue, and this has been a problem ever since this camera was first introduced. And this is a pretty extreme example due to the bright lights that I'm using. In general, this camera is actually pretty impressive and works really well in many situations, as we can see here in this quick DVR footage. Look at that. It still looks really, really good. But I'll tell you what, the V3 is a big upgrade, so if you can sacrifice the 0.7 grams, it's worth getting yourself a Nano V3. Okay, now we have the Micro V2 versus the new V3. We're gonna take a look at some camera modes and do some lens comparisons. In the first examples, we're looking at 720p60 in 4.3 and 16 by nine aspect ratios. Now the biggest difference with the Micro V3 camera, which should be obvious, is the lens. It's giving you a narrower field of view, but it's also allowing you to use the full 16 by nine sensor. This allows you to use the full modes like 1080p30 without that fisheyeing or big netting that you get with the previous cameras. But what happens if we swap the lenses? What happens if we put the brand new V3 lens on the Micro V2? Okay, so we're gonna take the Micro V2 and we're gonna look at the stock lens versus the RC5L lens versus the brand new V3 lens to see which lens really performs the best. This is 720p60 in the full 16 by nine aspect ratio. And here we are in 1080p30 with the full aspect ratio. Now to me, I think it's pretty obvious that the Micro V3 lens is by far the best image. So we're gonna look at the Micro V2 with the stock lens versus the V3 lens, just to get a better comparison of what it looks like if you were to install the Micro V3 lens onto your Micro V2 camera. And you can see that the Micro V3 lens is definitely more crisp, it has better contrast, better details, but you're losing a little bit of field of view. But to me personally, I think it's worth the extra details. Now here's 16 by nine which you can use with the new Micro V3 lens and have access to the whole sensor. To me personally, I think it's a really good upgrade. I think every mode looks slightly better. But how does the Micro V2 with the V3 lens compare to the Micro V3 camera? Well, I think the Micro V3 camera still has an advantage. And from what I understand, the Micro V3 lens has new run cam firmware to optimize it specifically for use with this lens. And if these comparisons are showing you anything, it's that that firmware is actually making a pretty big difference. However, the Micro V2 definitely looks really good with this V3 lens. And I'm gonna reach out to run cam and try to order a few more spares. I think it's a great upgrade. So now let's talk about something a little strange. Four by three, is this my new favorite mode? So these images are both with the Micro V3 camera and look how good the four by three is looking. It seems to be more crisp and has more detail than the 16 by nine. And here's a comparison to the 1080p 30 mode. And you can see that 1080p 30 mode does look better, but the four by three looks pretty darn close. So why is that? What is going on here? So let's go ahead and lay the images on top of each other. And what you can see is actually the four by three is not a 
larger field of view vertically. For some reason, it's actually a cropped in version of the 16 by nine, but it's retaining more detail. Now I don't really have a very good technical answer for you, but it's pretty obvious that there's a huge difference in quality. Now these are just still images. So let's go ahead and take a look at some actual video footage and do some comparisons. Yeah, I mean, look at this. This image looks awesome. Four by three is looking really, really good. I'm gonna sit here for just a second here. Okay, so here's me. Uh, I actually broke one of my helical antennas today, so I'm using uh, all these random uh, Omni antennas. Hey, look at that. Also, I have uh, 12, 12 satellites down here. That's pretty cool. All right. So, let's see here. 1080p 30 mode. Here we go. I think there's, I think there is some more detail, but you can see my hand, at least I can see in the goggles, my hand has more of a stutter to it. So it's definitely not as smooth as the 60 frames per second. I'm going to switch it now over to 720p60. Uh, definitely lost some detail. You can see that my sweet ass beard is a little blurrier and my fingers have lost some detail. Uh, and it also looks less, I don't know, contrasty or something. All right. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is check this out. Uh, 13, 14 satellites uh, on my HD0. And I don't have any crazy mounting with the GPS unit. It's just, it's mounted right behind the, um, the BTX. So anyway, anyway, let's go ahead and do the same run. Whee! And it flies to get that 60 frames per second, which is super nice. And the details are good. Let's see if we can make it through here without losing the quad. Ooh, it's tight. Ooh-wee, okay. Right, so let's see if I can turn around and come back through now, because that'll be interesting. Ooh, brother. Should've put my camera angle down a little further. I can't really see. Let's fly out here. And have a look at the world. Look at this. And I got this streak on my lens and that's from my fingerprint. So that's a little annoying. But uh, let's just ignore that for a minute and we'll spin right around. Flying 60 frames per second, four by three. And it is looking pretty darn good, isn't it? Earlier I flew through here, but I flew through the other way. I'm gonna to try to come back through the reverse way now. Whoa. <laughs> cool. All right, just for fun, let me, uh, let me just try to come in here and do it similar to what we did with the four by three. In proximity flying with a seven inch quad is a lot of fun. Uh, if you have the quad set up properly, uh, tuned properly, you can actually fly pretty well. You gotta figure out what's going on with that four by three. Why is that four by three so good? Why? I don't understand. We have to figure that out. All right, so here I am on the sides of me. You can see all the trees. And now I'm going to flip it over to four by three. Here's the four by three. Okay, so here's the major difference. Look at, we're losing a lot of information on the sides here. Uh, the image does in fact look better. Is it just a crop? What are we looking at here? So let me see here. Maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move a little bit closer so we can see some better details here. Okay. All right, so now here we are. This is me and we're going to 16 by nine full. And yeah, I definitely think I look more pixelated. Okay, now we do four by three. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump over to 1080p 30 and we'll see how that compares. That does look much better and I'm getting the much wider version. Okay, so the 1080p 30 mode is by far the best looking mode. There's no question about that. The four by three does look better than the 16 by nine, but you lose a lot of information on the sides. Yeah, oh, I don't know, we're gonna, we'll have to do some more tests, but I, this, was, this was interesting and it was a beautiful sunny day. And one thing I wanna point out again, 15, 16 satellites, ice. Um, all right, cool. Well, that wraps it up for today's test. Let's head back to the car. 
Here we go. 